Welcome. Welcome to the outdoor version of the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I'm up here in Sholo, Arizona. Just take a little hike. Let's show you around here. You can see that the clouds are starting to billow. And that will mean downpours, thunderstorms in the afternoon. It gets kind of interesting up here. Kind of like Hawaii, but not as, uh, not as muggy. Haven't seen anybody mugged yet. But looking at the real estate market, where are we headed? We're in a recession, there's no doubt. No doubt in my mind, anyway. What does a recession mean? Well, all depends on what's causing it, how severe it is, how long it lasts. I mean, I've lived through several of them. Some of them, somebody had to tell me I was in a recession. I had no idea. Didn't affect me. Didn't affect my house price. So it doesn't always mean that everything's gonna come crashing down, real estate prices are gonna crumble. Right now, I think, people that own homes have probably the largest cushion in equity than we've ever seen historically in the United States. That's going to have an impact. That impact's going to be they don't have to sell. So prices can come tumbling down. It's not going to affect nearly as many people as it could. Will it affect some people if prices come down? Depends on when they bought. Depends on what kind of loan they had. Back in 2006 and 7, you know this the drill everybody had ridiculous loans you know you could all you had to do is fog up mirror and you could get a you could get credit now it's a lot tighter people have a lot more equity and so the risk of foreclosures and massive house reductions i don't see it but on the other side transactions have just collapsed we're down to about 2700 a week and that's uh, historically low first time home buyers are priced out we have an affordability issue that needs to be solved. So what's going on? Well, the central bank is raising rates and they're not raising rates just to solve housing. They're raising rates for a number of reasons. When there's more credit availability out there, that means more money is being created and there's more spending. And when you have too much spending and not enough goods, you have inflation. It's the only way to solve that, tamp down on the spending pull the credit pull the credit to the point where people are not spending as much businesses cars homes everything until that tightens up you continue to have inflation that's a very simple explanation for it as far as real estate goes we can't have prices come down until inventory goes up and inventory is coming up we got down to a low of 4,800 homes on the market and we were having 4,100 homes come on the market every seven days. And guess what? We were selling 4,000, 4,100 of them every seven days. Now we have about 4,300 homes coming on the market, only 200 more than what we used to. That's not a huge leap, but the difference is only 27, 2,800 of them are going under contract. So now you've got this gap. And I explained the other day, it's like, working with uh, two of you have a shovel one of you your job is to take the dirt and put it on that pile make the pile bigger the other guy's job is to take that same scoop and take it off the pile so you got one scoop coming on one scoop coming off now the guy whose job it is to take the dirt off the pile is on a lunch break so the pile keeps getting bigger and that's what's happening with real estate with our listings so we're up to over 18,000 so the gap between the number of homes that are on the market the number of homes that are selling is growing every week and every day. What's interesting though, the number of homes coming on every seven days is not exponentially larger at all than last year. In fact, it's only a difference of about 100 homes. Why is that? Well, the only homes I'm seeing that are coming on the market are there's a handful of owner occupied or people for whatever life reasons need to sell their home, but they're not rushing to put them on the market. There's no panic. I think that's because there's so much cushion. But we're seeing a lot of eye buyers, they have about 200 or 2,000 homes on the market. Seeing a lot of uh, individual flippers. Those two categories, they were gonna put their homes out there anyway. They didn't buy these to hold on to them. They bought them to flip them. So that's a natural occurrence, but they're out there. And they have a six-month supply. 
And the other thing that's adding to the inventory is new home construction. They weren't even playing in that sandbox. They didn't have to put their listings on the multiple listing service. They didn't need to. There was such a severe shortage that their homes were being found anyway. Now there's a lot of cancellations. There's uh, foot traffic and the new home communities is down to virtually nothing. I wish I could have turned around. I just had a lizard walk in front of me. So why digress? So the number is growing because of those three categories. I buyers, investors, new construction. The other thing that I see is consumer household debt in relationship to disposable income is at the lowest level in decades. In other words, you didn't run up your credit cards yet. If there's a big recession, some of you lose your jobs, you probably will run up your credit cards. That number will change, always does during a recession. And there's a lot of outside influences with banking, world issues, things that are totally out of our control that could really change the dynamics dramatically. Who knows? If I wanted to buy this summer, um, A, I think I'd wait because we need to see how fast prices are coming down. Those numbers aren't gonna start rolling out until about the end of August. But I don't think I would ignore the iBuyers and flippers. They have to sell. Uh, mom and pop, I call them mom and pop, single family homes, owner occupied. As a rule, they don't have to sell. They're trying to see what they can get for their home. But the iBuyers, they gotta move these things. And don't wait for the price to come to you. You go to the price. What are you willing to pay for it? Shoot them an offer, but don't go in without an agent because they do business a lot differently. You're not negotiating with one person. It goes to a group of people, emails, departments. It's a little tougher. So, you know, get an agent like me that's dealt with open door and offer pad before and investors. They're going to be willing to contribute a lot for you. They just need these homes off the book, books. Single family homeowners, they're not going to be able to stomach reducing the price by 50 grand. Problem is, most of them have the home it's bought, you know, eight years ago and now it's double what it was, but they still look at that peak price from March and wish they could get it. And that, that ship has sailed, so it's not there. So when you say, well, in, in May, I priced my house at 600,000. I only paid oh, four and a quarter for it. I still don't feel good about lowering the price 50 grand. An eye buyer's not gonna care. Okay, we gotta get it off the books. We're gonna do a, a Q4 write-off, we're out of here. Uh, we'll lose our millions. And then, uh, you know, stockholders won't be happy with us, but case sera, sera. So I think you have more wiggle room there and you may be able to get them, I know you'll be able to get them to buy down your interest rate, not a 2-1 buy down that buys it down for two years and one year, but for the total term of the loan, 30 years. So go ahead and get that house. Now, will the house go down in value after that? It might, but if you got into a house with a payment that you're comfortable and a term that you're comfortable with, and you're pretty happy about the price you got, and you had to buy versus rent, I'd pull the trigger. That's just my summer forecast. Beyond that, um, it's going to be very interesting to see where we go. Right now, the bond market is not really reacting and raising rates that you think they would after seeing what, what uh, the central banks have done. You would think that you would see interest rates coming up faster, but whenever you have a recession, rates usually don't rise along with the recession. They usually come down. But central banks not in a period, in a position where they can lower the rates right now, and that's why you're hearing things called stagflation. We have inflation, but we have zero growth. So that's probably headed our way. It's really uncharted territories. This is the first time that we've ever had a housing market where you're looking at the majority of people, um, over 33 million of you have homes that are below, finance below 4%. And now things are turning, what do you do? We don't know. We can't go back and look at a time when that's happened before. So this is all new. Um, I know there's guys out there, I see it in the comments, I'd be insulted if prices don't crash by 50%. Well, who's insulting you? Nobody's pushing a button. Nobody's going to look and say, we're down 30, stop there. The market controls this. Demand from buyers. So there's nobody pushing that button, setting prices 
having an agenda. The politicians, central banks, they're looking at the data and they're winging it just like you and I are. So just stay on top of the numbers. We'll see what happens. Take care.